Okay, uh, Steve, I'm not monitoring. I'm not going to monitor, so I'll leave oh, it to you. Okay. okay, so I'm rolling. Rolling, yeah. Okay. So, all right, first of all, please just tell me your name and tell us about your role. Uh, my name is Pat Hickey. I'm a, a former Nevada assembly person, uh, pretty involved there with education issues. I was the original sponsor of charter school uh, education in Nevada, part of the uh, revision of the funding formula uh, for K-12 education. Uh, I now uh, serve, as I was appointed by Governor Sandoval, on the State Board of Education. Um, I uh, teach in the high schools as a substitute, trying to see how our reforms uh, and revenue enhancements uh, are, are working out as a teach the political science department at UNR. And I'm supportive of uh, some innovative uh, changes to uh, how we uh, produce students that are career and, and uh, higher institutional educational ready for the 21st century. Fantastic. You, you covered pretty much the whole gamut of the questions here. <laughs> but, but no, what I'd like to do, as I'm not the producer, I'd like to continue and ask you. You may no, repeat the fine. answer, but that's fine. so how did you get into education? Well, uh, in, in the legislature, the, the, there's probably no more important issue uh, for any state, in Nevada in particular. Uh, we'd like to spend more money on educating students than incarcerating them, for example. Uh, so I've always looked for reforms uh, that become the basis, I think, for enhanced revenues. That was always my argument, that Nevadans will be willing uh, to invest more into education, i.e. in the form of, of even enhanced taxes, uh, if we can show that we're going in a way that's going to improve and innovate education. So that's what's inspired me about this project of uh, super schools in Warsaw County, is that we're looking at a model that can begin us down the road of transforming uh, the way students are educated and therefore making them more ready uh, for the jobs that are out there and also more likely to stay in Nevada and be a productive part of our community. Okay. How did you personally come to the XQ project? Well, I was contacted by uh, Dr. Albert, and I was impressed with uh, all that she's done at UNR, and uh, appreciate that she's looking for community-based partners uh, to try to do some innovative things for education here. I was impressed by the, the kinds of people, like Katie Simon and, and others, uh, who are uh, members of our community that see this as a viable alternative uh, to the ways in which we've been educating our high school students. What does equity in public education mean to you? Well, you know, we want everybody to have an opportunity equally, but we also should appreciate that everybody is, is going to go down different paths, and so we, we, we need to get away from one size fits all in, in terms of the systems that we create because some people should and will value by going on to higher education. On the other hand, uh, career and technical education uh, provides uh, great careers and, and frankly great opportunities for personal and, and financial and, and advancement. Uh, and, and so looking at an innovative system that's going to help support and direct students to whatever their strengths are, uh, I, I think is something much better than just the old system of education where one size fits all, because it doesn't. Right, right. What do you hope to achieve as a representative for the Washoe District? Well, I'm already on the state school board uh, that, that does represent Warshaw and, and northern Nevada and, and rural Nevada. Uh, in, in that role, uh, you want to make sure that the monies that taxpayers and, and the state legislature and the governor uh, invest in Nevada education are appropriately and fairly distributed. And so that's my role in the State Board of Education. But uh, as a role uh, with respect to the super schools or an advisor or a friend, uh, I, I want to see innovative uh, alternatives like this succeed as a model 
uh, not only to inspire more people to go into the education field, but to help our students be more successful. Why is there such a big debate around charter schools as going against the best interest for district schools? And why is that? Uh, why is it that charters get so much resistance? Um, they, they certainly don't get as much resistance as they used to because I think people have become aware and, and uh, school district uh, officials as well that charter schools are part of the public school system. So they're a reform within our public schools. They're not a choice to leave the public school system as private school uh, options are and that can sometimes be troubling uh, to the public school system. So I, I think now Nevada is, is rated I think 13th in the country uh, in terms of uh, the ways in which it allows charter schools to innovate and to exist and to be funded. And I think that's an important uh, distinction and I think it will help and already has improved uh, education in Nevada as a result of the ways in which we've allowed charter schools to prosper. What are some of the biggest misconceptions surrounding the debate? Uh, I, I think that, that charter schools are like private schools, again, and, and frankly, they're not. Uh, charter schools operate uh, by taxpayer funding and get the same per pupil funding uh, that our traditional schools get. So I, I think we need to look at charter schools as an innovative partner of the public school system and not merely a competitor. What do the students in your district have to gain from being the first wave of students exposed to the Washoe Super Schools innovative ideas? Well, hopefully if it gets off the ground and, and, and uh, the super school really does turn education on its head a little bit and, and be more student-centered and project-centered. It may serve as an example for innovation and changes that will make the larger system more effective and more successful. Perfect, that was it. <laughs>